How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Weather Sprung Drop Thousand and I hope you guys are having a great day today as of course we're going to take a look at the Northern Atlantic at this time and take a look at the latest Climate Prediction Center's forecast when it comes to the um, weeks on um, the next two weeks. We do see that the Climate Prediction Center is forecasting an area right around the Western Caribbean as well as Southern Gulf of Mexico um, where tropical cyclone development is possible and it includes a small area just off the Southeast coast as well. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to these areas right here for tropical cyclone development, especially since the sea surface temperatures right now are much warmer than average, which should make conditions more favorable for tropical cyclone development as um, throughout pretty much throughout the entirety of the month of October and moving on to uh, the week ending October 17th we do see um, this area um, is still forecasted um, for, at, for at least a possibility of tropical cyclone development so we're going to um, keep a close eye on the Western Caribbean over the next few days as as we're definitely going to need to um, keep uh, um, be aware of how the computer models shift their forecasts over the next several days. In the more immediate future, however, we do have two tropical storms right over the main development region. We have Tropical Storm Philippe, which currently has sustained winds at around 50 miles per hour. And we also have Tropical Storm Rena, which is slightly weaker with winds at around 45 miles per hour. And taking a look at the overall compositions um, of these two storm systems, we do see that Tropical Storm Philippe looks healthier than Tropical Storm Rena. We see a lot more convection with Tropical Storm Philippe, while Rena looks like it's definitely struggling. We don't really see much rotation. It looks very um, lopsided where um, the convective activity, where the western half of Tropical Storm Rena is completely dry for the most part, with all of the convective activity going on right around the eastern side of Tropical Storm Rena, which is the reason why um, Rena is expected to dissipate um, as it continues ahead for northward and eventually actually combine with Tropical Storm Philippe. And Philippe is only expected to intensify thanks to um, thanks to a very unstable environment. There won't be a lot of dry air that's expected to um, inhibit this storm from intensifying as it heads for northward. And in fact, the remnants of Tropical Storm Rena would um, help um, uh, help mitigate the dry air surrounding it, since it'll provide another area where um, another area of convective activity um, Tropical Storm Philippe could absorb and push away the stable air mass. So this is expected to at least have a favorable environment to continue to intensify, and the wind shear won't necessarily be that um, strong enough to deter it from intensifying. However, the good news is that it's unlikely that it's going to impact the Lesser Antilles. There is a possibility um, that it could come uncomfortably close to where you might experience indirect impacts such as heavier rainfall and gustier winds, potentially wind gusts over 40 miles per hour. If this were to take the far eastward track, which is a possibility the European model is still over, um, is still persisting on that um, scenario occurring. However, I'll say that most likely it'll stay off the sh off the coast of the Lesser Antilles, um, and hopefully just off um, just enough away from the Lesser Antilles where you wouldn't experience heavy rainfall or gusty winds. But um, the good news is is that. Um, well, it likely it's pretty much inevitable. It won't directly impact the Lesser Antilles or any other of the Caribbean islands. Let's first take a look at the GFS um, model run when it comes to relative humidity in the mid levels. We do see that um, tropical storm. Um, the GFS model is expecting tropical storm Philippe to intensify quite a bit, reaching hurricane status and potentially major hurricane status. We see this become a very strong storm in the near future, hovering around 958 millibars. However, it seems like the National Hurricane Center isn't as confident this will develop into a hurricane as the GFS model has a bias where it wants to intensify storm systems a little bit too quickly and too rapidly um, during the middle of the hurricane season. Um, so this could be one of the more, um, the GFS model might be a little bit too aggressive when it comes to its strength. However, at the very least, I do expect a decent amount of strengthening. And like I said, 
Philippe should help push away a lot of the stable air that's just so west of it, make this storm more symmetrical to where the convective activity is also occurring on the western side, and it should intensify from there. The good news is that the GFS model in this scenario wants to uh, um, wants to take Philippe um, just off the coast of the Lesser Antilles and far enough to where you wouldn't really experience rainfall or the gusty winds associated with this storm system, which would certainly be the best case scenario. But the European model shows a different scenario where taking a look at the European model it takes it a lot closer to the Lesser Antilles where this is probably only around 50 miles just off the coast which is certainly close enough to bring heavier rainfall as well as gustier winds rough surf and a higher rip current risk so the Lesser Antilles you still want to pay close attention to that possibility it's pretty rare to see the, um, the conditions play um, or at least the uncertainty this high for a storm system that's this close into the future because we're only going around 72 hours out with this only three days and we're still seeing a pretty large um variation between the two most reliable computer models when it comes to its trajectory which is quite rare so that that possibility still exists for this to come uncomfortably close and bring um maybe um a little bit um maybe as far as Chogo storm force impacts right around the lesser amplities so be aware of that possibility the european model expects this storm system to uh, strengthen um, definitely not as rapidly as the GFS model. It mainly remains a tropical storm. And moving forward with the forecast, it just seems to struggle with a little bit too much dry air on the western side. We see in the 12Z run, it's in fact almost making landfall right around the um, Lesser Antilles, which is definitely interesting. But as of the 18Z run, it has been leaning a little bit closer to an offshore track. We're going to need to see if that trend continues and hopefully it does we don't want to see impacts in the lesser antilles but we do see the european model is a lot less aggressive in strengthening this maybe it does strengthen this into a hurricane in the open atlantic but it won't impact any land at least for the foreseeable future and probably for the rest of its time it's a tropical cyclone as it seems like the wind shear is just going to be too much and the westerly winds are going to be too much for this to have any sort of possibility to impact the United States or Canada, which is certainly good news. Now, shifting our focus um, towards the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, because like I said, the CPC, the Climate Prediction Center, is forecasting an area where um, tropical cyclone development could be possible in the more long-term future. And the reason why is because we're going to see this continuous gyre um, um, pretty much just pound the Central American area with heavy rainfall as well as plenty of convective activity moving through. The European model is definitely less aggressive with this convective activity, but we still, but with any of these areas, that easily could be a, tr a future tropical storm, such as this area of moisture right here. Um, and when it comes to the hurricane season and with sea surf temperatures this um this high during the month of october much warmer than average it's always good to take a look at some of these pieces of energy and how they move over um the caribbean and the gulf of mexico because this is an area that's most um, vulnerable to tropical cyclone development right over the Caribbean. It's not the main development region. We still see the main development region phase out when it comes to tropical cyclone development during the month of October, but the majority of it happens right over the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean. So any of these chops we can do, we're gonna need to pay very close attention to this. The European model, the good news, at least for right now, is developing anything really solidable um just yet the gfs model is a little bit more aggressive in the moisture that's moving through the caribbean where we do see plenty of moisture associated with the gyre and we also could maybe see a tropical nc out of the remnants of a mid lat to low moving through that could be a possibility um we're definitely going to pay close attention to that and in fact we do have a small tropical wave that might be of interest by um, next um, by next week or by next weekend where we do see an area of moisture the GFS model 
does develop at least a well-defined low pressure system could be chuggle storm status um we're gonna we're gonna have to wait and see on that but i'll keep you guys updated if we have any sort of developments with this chuggle wave and in terms of anything else in the caribbean just a lot of moisture not really anything soluble which is good news but with this gyre we're always definitely going to need to keep this in mind and the wind shear also should be um, unfavorable for tropical cyclone development, at least over the Gulf of Mexico, which is certainly good news. But tropical storms could still develop under strong wind shear, especially if they get a lot of barrel clinic instability um, associated with a strong wind shear. So um, we also need to be aware of that possibility. It's typical for um, a lot of areas during the month of October um, to experience a much stronger um, wind shear compared to September and October. Um, I, I mean September and August, but we still see plenty of tropical cyclones develop in the month of October, even though the wind shear um, is quite strong during that month. So we're definitely going to pay very close attention to this over the next few um, weeks um, because I have a feeling that at, we're, we could see tropical cycle development right over the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, um, at least um, during the early to mid part of October. Here's what the National Hurricane Center is forecasting when it comes to tropical storm Philippe. And we do see that the um, that the National Hurricane Center is forecasting this to um, stay at tropical storm status. But I wouldn't be surprised if we do see a hurricane in the more long term future. Bermuda, you need to be aware of higher surf as well as dangerous rip currents. And so as the lesser Antilles, this storm will be um, quite formidable just off the coast, even if it doesn't directly impact you guys. So be aware of that possibility of stronger rip currents and that could um and i could say the same for those along the united states coast even though the storm might be hundreds of miles away you still could experience a rip current risk associated with it um with this storm system so uh, um make sure to be aware of that possibility if this continues to intensify over the northern atlantic and like i said with tropical storm um philippe um trouble um there's also tropical storm rena but rena is expected to dissipate um, um, by the time we approach the Monday time frame, as it likely will merge with Tropical Storm Philippe. It's the much weaker storm right now. It's dealing with a strong amount of wind shear associated with the outflow of the much stronger Tropical Storm Philippe. So that's definitely going to inhibit its um, the storm from intensifying. And, and you see that the storm's wind field is quite lopsided. All the winds are located on the eastern half of this storm system and it's very difficult for a tropical cycle to develop when all the energy is located on one side it needs to have energy on all sides for the rotation and the heat engine and the convergence to be maximized for the storm system to intensify and we're not seeing that with the storm system the wind shear and the dry air on the western side is just too much for the storm to handle and it likely will dissipate and merge with tropical storm philippe here are what the current ensemble members are stating, and it's pretty much what you'd expect for Tropical Storm Philippe. The GFS model is taking a track um, sort of in this direction, and we do see a lot of them do develop it into hurricane status. I definitely wouldn't rule out that possibility, especially in the more long-term future. Tropical Storm Rena will dissipate and merge with, with potential hurricane Philippe. However, I want to point out the Caribbean because we do have several um um instances where the ensemble members do want to develop a tropical storm just off the central american coast which is the reason why it's good to be aware of any so any piece of convective activity you see over the caribbean over the next several weeks because those could easily be our next tropical storm and i'll keep you guys updated if the computer models develop a little bit more something a little bit more solidable in the caribbean um over the next few weeks but that's it for now guys i thank you guys for watching make sure to like if you enjoy this video and make sure to subscribe for more weather related content and i hope you i hope you guys all have a great day